G'day. Down the shed today, I'm working on a VE Commodore V6. Going to be changing out the automatic transmission without using a hoist. Start the job off by disconnecting the battery. You'll need a 10mm spanner or socket to undo the battery clamp. Pull the negative off first. I like to throw just a, an old battery terminal cover on it. Go from there. So before jacking the car up, try and get as much as you can done from above. So you've got to loosen off the dipstick tube, which is that 10mm bolt goes there. Once you've removed that bolt, there's an earth wire that's hanging out of the way. And that dipstick tube will wriggle out of the transmission. Let me see, but uh, that's disconnect now out of the transmission so that will drop down. If you can, try and apply CRC to the exhaust bolts that hold the Cadillac converter up because the job's easier with those out of the way. Remove this plastic clover which just pops off. I can only get to a one one nut down there, it focuses. So I have to get the other one from below. Now these bolts will be very, very stiff slash seized. I got it to crack with a fair bit of effort, but um, once you get it to crack, just work it back and forth, trying to get that CRC through the thread. So I've got that one loosened off, so it's good to go. This one here, I'm just working back and forth. Do the same on the other side. So I've used a single hex 15mm socket with a couple of extension bars. And I used a half inch breaker bar just to crack it and I've gone back to a 3.8 drive. So it's good to go. I'm up to the stage of jacking the car up at the moment, but because I couldn't fit my jack under, I've rolled it forward onto some blocks of wood. I've applied the handbrake, put it into park, just chock the back wheels with some bricks. Need to jack it up a minimum of 400 mil to slide the transmission out. So whatever your lowest point on your car is, try and go above that. Now I'm using a couple of jack stands because the ramps aren't high enough. Now these ones standing out as they are 360 mil minimum height. I've just got a two ton workshop jack so now with the car jacked up, I had the jack under here, cross member support. The jack stands are at 480 ground to lower control arm mount height. Just got this bash guard I'll rip off, which I've got another 50 mil behind that. So it gives me a clearance of about 450 to 470 to uh, pull the gearbox out. So what I've also done for a bit of insurance is I've jammed my car ramps underneath just in case something happened to fail. Always check to make sure the car's not going to drop. Give it a decent sort of, you know what I mean, shake. Make sure it's solid on those mounts before you get under there. So with some mighty ninja hands, I was able to get your socket on the back nut to undo that catalytic converter. 
So I should be able to get my extension down in there now and crack that off. I've also sprayed these ends with some CRC and we'll get them out of the way. So there we have it, my breaker bar, two 300mm extensions onto a wobble drive, onto the uni socket, onto the 15mm. Uh, it's cracked it, use the ratchet to continue now. There we go, I'm done. See if I can show you what I had set up. The single hex socket, uni, wobble drive, which you could probably get away with a wobble drive extension bar, another extension, and my 3.8 drive ratchet. Whew, it's off. Now, just to undo the Cadillac converter bolts that bolt up onto the exhaust, 15 mil again, plenty of CRC, and just gently work them. So all I've done with the passenger side Cadillac converter was wiggled it out of the bolt holes, moved it just out of, the, out of the way, held it with one hand, and with the other hand, reached up into here, and unplugged the plug. That's to get the passenger side out. So with the right hand side Cadillac converter, I've just plopped it out of the way, trying to get to that plug, which was electrical taped to the harness. I've just used a flat blade screwdriver to pry it all apart. That's what you got to undo to get this Cadillac converter out. Or uh, continue fighting. So with the, some long nose pointy pliers, I was able to free it off by pushing down that tab. I think when I put it back together I'll leave the transmission hanging down so I can actually uh, get my hands in there. That's the right hand side Cadillac converter removed. Now those pre-cat oxygen sensors I just showed you, so these are the after cat, so post. Just going to disconnect those. Looks like someone's cable tied them up. Again, these are pretty simple. And that's so we can get the exhaust off next. Just makes it easier to get to the drive shaft. Now with this plug here, again, same. Hold that tab in, wriggle it. Takes a little bit more than that, but uh, I've loosened it up. There you go. That's the tab on the side there you're trying to push down and you'll feel it click. While we're here, we'll disconnect the inhibitor. Just a seal pick, which should pull. Sorry, that there. Just pulls out. Like that. Now this section should slide down off the inhibitor and you get the idea that wriggles off. I'll undo the selector. This will be tight so just gently wiggle it off and then try and hold it out the way. That's that side. Also, I'd like to mention how I undone the selector. 15mm spanner and a shifter just to hold the selector arm. With the right hand side post sensor, again I used pointy nose pliers up in there to pull that plug out. Uh, to reassemble, I think we'll have to have the transmission hanging down to get two hands in there. Now at the back of the vehicle, to drop the exhaust down, there's a rubber mount just there. Use a flat blade screwdriver in there, that'll pop that off. And up the back here is another mount, it's held up with two 13mm bolts, and that'll drop it down. 
So I ended up getting my hand onto that mount. I sprayed some silicon spray on it and just pulled it off. Now the exhaust is free. I'll show you. There's a um, brace that goes across to undo. This is that brace I was talking about. Once you drop that down, the exhaust will come down. Slide it back. Just get it out of the way. With this brace, I don't think you can really stuff it up, but if you're pulling anything off, just put an arrow pointing forward for reassembly, then you've got an idea. I had a bit of a uh, drama. The exhaust just wouldn't slide out, so I just had to jack the car up just a touch to pull it out the back. So there's that rubber mount, it's held up with two bolts. You could probably pry that off, but I found it easier just to undo those two. Now she's out the way. You got a lot more clearance. You get into that drive shaft now. And as you've seen, two mounts. Makes it easier on yourself, especially on the floor. So just a little tip, when you take like the Cadillac converter off the driver's side, put it on the driver's side, same with the passenger side. If you take any brackets off, right at the top. Like I said, you've got that arrow, so you know it goes top, forward. Buy yourself a cheap container. They're about eight bucks from Bunnings. And every nut and bolt you take out, just label it. And then, technically, the way you've taken it apart, you do a reverse procedure and go back the other way. I reckon that's a good idea. Now you've got the heat shroud to remove. It's only held up by two 10 mil bolts, one on each side. Again, draw an arrow on it so you know which way it goes. But you can't really stuff it up. There's where that beam cross percent, ah, the cross brace went across before. But yeah, anything just to make it easier for when you're putting it back together. Now with that heat shroud removed, just be aware, lots of stuff may fall down. You've got a breather tube extension, which just slides off. So I don't know if it's the side. So I've already uh, cracked all these bolts. I like to disconnect the rubber donut from the yoke. So that way when you've got it out on the floor you can change it if you have to. So just inspect the condition. Make sure it's not perished between here. So they're undone. You need a 19mm spanner. An 18 mil. They're pretty simple. Come down to the drive shaft center bearing and just check for movement. Normally these flog out. This one's okay. And again, with the diff, these are 18 mil bolts which go into the yoke of the diff. I find just pulling those out again, pry the rubber donut off. Now you don't have to turn the drive shaft to get to those bolts, even though they're tricky. I just used 3 8 18 mil socket. I was able to get up and crack it all off. Now just get your pry bar just in between here and just lever it off. But to help you get that out, undo your center bearing first. I'll show you that. Another little tip, just use one of these double ring and offset spanners. It actually fits nice and snug there. That way you can get your spanner on the other side and just loosen it off or ratchet. Now that's all undone, pry bar underneath without dropping it on myself. Should be able to just push that in. It'll drop down. And you'll see what I mean by undoing the center bearing. So that's undone. Two 13 mil bolts. I should be able to pull that down now. There we go. 
and then same thing at the other end. Pull it off the diff housing, well the diff yoke. Now with the dry shaft out, you can uh, disconnect the rear speed sensor and we'll move around and I'll pull the starter motor out, which is up in here. Need a Torx bit to undo that little cover. Removing that Torx bit screw. It's a T25 you'll need. That heat shroud's just clipped on. Just pops off. Now this has had a new starter motor fitted. It's got a blade style exciter wire there. Now that's probably not it's not the greatest. Slides off. Then your main power is a 13mm nut you need. Yeah, uh, socket, pull that off. To remove the two mounting bolts, the socket recommended is a E14, an E socket. Otherwise, you can get away with using an 11mm multi-hex socket. And that fits just as good. So, we'll pull that out. Stage I'm up to now, I'm going to undo the ring gear bolts that go into the torque converter. I'm just going to take this bash guard off this little inspection panel. That's it. To undo the ring gear bolts, they are located where the starter motor lives. Just in here. You need an 18mm socket to undo those. Once I've got that lined up, I make a reference point for reassembly. The easiest way I've found to undo these bolts, there's three of them. So if you have a deep 18mm socket, locks up against the engine block, then you just use your ratchet. When you're pushing to crack them, try and use an open hand to push it up. Because if you have it closed and they give, you'll smash your knuckles. And that's not a happy day. When turning the engine over, I just use a pry bar against the ring gear teeth. Just being small, small movements. Now with all those bolts removed, you should be able to push the torque converter back. There we go. Slip back. Just take reference to the gap you've got. Torque converter should spin around. Right, eh? Hey. Either you're in the area, there's these two plastic covers. There's one on this side. Left and uh, yeah, this one's on the right hand side. Just need to undo two 10 mil bolts. Pull them out. I'm up to the stage where I want to lower the trans at the back for now. Just supporting it with the hydraulic jack. You need a 15mm socket or spanner. Undo the four mounting bolts. Then I'll let it down slowly with the jack so you can access the oil cooler lines and the main plug on that right hand side. So just letting it down slowly. start hearing any funny noises anywhere, just stop. Now this will give us enough clearance to get our hand up in there and remove breather line under the main plug on the side. So to undo this plug here, there's two tangs down the bottom squeeze on them and give it a wriggle there we go so the tangs I'm talking about on the side here squeeze those in it's out of the way I think I already showed you 
pull the speedo out, which is that clip there. Now we've got a, there's a breather pipe on top to disconnect. That breather line I was talking about uh, on this car wasn't even connected, but it's meant to be plugged up behind the back of the engine there somewhere. That's made it easier. So there's also a harness P clamp, which you can wiggle that out. Now the harness is loose in there. I'll cable tie that out of the way and I'll show you what I've done there. What I've done with the harness is I've just pulled it around, just wrapped it around the chassis for now, and just wedged it out of the way so you can pull the transmission down. There's the dipstick. And now we're on to the stage of pulling the transmission cooler lines out. To do this little mission, I've just used a seal pick to pop back that dust cover. So there's two of them, one on each pipe. Now in here is a little circlip that you need to pop out. Or if you can't get it, undo the fitting. I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is what that circlip looks like. If you picture it going on through there and holding it in, it locks in when that pipe's in the way. I use the 90 degree seal pick. I'm able to get into there and peel it back. Obviously, if you see it pop out, stop and then use the little hook and try and catch it as you pull it out. Now, the transmission cooling pipes will need a bit of a wriggle out and they'll come straight out. Fail at getting those little clips out, you can use a pipe spanner on it, three quarter, 19 mil. But if you're patient, it makes the job a lot easier. Now I've got both those circ clips out. Oh, you can see the bottom one's popped out top one just wriggle it and if you can't get it just apply light pressure underneath the pipe and keep working it back and forth it should pop out there we have it they've popped out so what I do I'll cable tie them out the way as well for removal of the transmission so just some little tips I've just cable tied the harness out of the way so I've got plenty of clearance same with the selector shaft selector arm just cable tied it out of the way right time for the fun part pull out those bell housing mounting bolts there's eight facing forwards and there's one facing back. To undo these, the E socket 14 or a multi hex 11mm socket. So, to get those top bolts out in the bell housing, I used a wobble drive adapter, a couple of 300mm extensions, I think it's a 250 ish. You want a total length of about 800 just to make it easier on yourself so what I've done I've just left that middle bolt in and I've put two bolts on either side about half the thread just to hold them in place then I've placed a block of wood rubber so you can use an old car mat or something under here and I've got a bit of old Jarrah wood with the hydraulic jack just supporting the load. So what I'll do now is take that top bolt out. And then because those side bolts are easy to get to, you're out of the way in case the trans does come down on you. And there you go. Those extensions make it quite handy to get that bolt out.
So that top bolt's out now. I'll just pull these side ones out. So they should finger tight. Remembering to stay to the side when pulling these bolts out. But they're just in case. You have got dowels that hold it up in, on there, but it will be separating at the moment. There's no bolts holding that in at the moment, so do not go under it. Now, I'm just going to crack the jack just a touch and give it a bit of a wriggle. Fly bar. Let it down slowly. There you go, you can balance it. And what I'll do now for this stage, just slide it forward, let it rest on the engine. I'll show you what we'll do next. <laughs> What I do here is I slide it onto that bit of old cupboard. Slide another bit of piece of cupboard under. And drag it out. And here we go. Four speeds out. Dirty thumbs up. So, the four speed trans is out. I'll run you through some of the tools I used. It might help you out. Basically, 18, 15, uh, possibly, yeah, 19 on the drive shaft there. The E socket. Now, these are cheap for a set. I think I actually brought these from Bunnings. E14. Otherwise, the 11mm multi hex is close enough. Pair of side cutters, pointy nose pliers, long, they were handy for me. Cutler ratchets, tape measure, CRC, seal pick, Torx Allen key, that was a T25. Cutler marker pens, 13mm socket, 10mm socket, 15, 18, and again, a couple of deeps. And they are single hex, a uh, little pry bar, a bit of a breaker bar there. Use an attachment, so from half inch down to three eight. I may have misled you before with these extensions. They're two eighty in length, and that one there was a two hundred. So a couple of random ones. Some other handy tooling if you got it. Rattle gun. A uh, electric ratchet, some cable ties, and this parts container now. I like using this because if you haven't done the job before, you can set it all up. And if you get called away, e.g. kids come get you for dinner, in my case, you can uh, come back to it. You know where you're at. All right, well, if this video is any help, please throw us a thumbs up. And 
I'll do a sequence to part two of refitting it on the ground. Take it easy.